going up. And uh, so just uh, be, keep that in mind. Also, the Christmas parade, which... December 12th. I, uh, yes, I was going to say, I believe it's the 12th. So yes, so December the 12th is going to be the Christmas parade. And we have some really beautiful flyers that are on the way. Uh, they're square, kind of like the Evolution Solution. And um, I, uh, if, if you're on band, I'd really appreciate it if you could, uh, if you could just watch the video that, that those people will be taken to uh, when, they, when they, uh, they scan the QR code. And the reason why is, is so that you can be familiar uh, t uh, with what you're giving out. Um, it's a, about a, I think it's about a seven minute gospel presentation and um, has a lot to do with Christmas and receiving gifts and so... Um, I really tried to uh, just help people to understand it a little bit more based on uh, who we're going to be giving it out to. So uh, just be in prayer about that. I believe God really wants to use that. Um, and so just, uh, just pray that, that the weather will be good and that we'll be able to give out a whole bunch of these. I've ordered a lot because um, we can use these again. This is something that uh, there's no dates or anything like that on there. Uh, nothing about the parade on there necessarily, but it, it can be used again. So uh, I've ordered probably some extras, so we have plenty to give out. We definitely won't run out this time, So, um, but just be in prayer about that, okay? All right, so uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer now, okay? All right, I need help. Thanksgiving uh, service. Oh, yes, okay. Thank you. You know, some of these preachers in these big churches, they'll be talking to you, and all of a sudden people will drop notes off to them, and they're like, oh, you know, they get, they get reminded. Uh, but uh, anyway, so Tuesday uh, is for this, this week. It's not going to be Wednesday church. It's going to be Tuesday um, because of Thanksgiving, okay? So I just wanted to give you a heads up about that uh, so that you're not uh, taken off guard. You show up Wednesday and nobody's here, okay? Uh, but we've really had some good prayer meetings, and I really would encourage you to come out and be a part of it. We've really been praying that God would do a work in our church, all right? So, uh, so please come on Wednesday, all right? That's what we're doing is we're praying. We're talking to God. So um, let's go ahead, and we'll have a word of prayer and ask God's blessing on the service, all right? So Heavenly Father, we do thank you again for the opportunity that we have to get together to be with you. Lord, I thank you that we can... Uh, worship you as saints of God. Lord, we all have one thing in common. And Lord, we all come from different backgrounds, but we have one thing in common, and that's we're washed in the blood of the Lamb. And I thank you for that. And I just ask that you would just help us to leave here with a stronger understanding of uh, a, a, a rejuvenated spirit, knowing that you've given us everything we need to serve you. And Lord, we ask that you would just protect us from the enemy today. We plead the blood of Christ and we claim the cross against him, and we trust that he not be allowed to intervene in our church service. We trust in the Holy Spirit that you'll have complete liberty in what's done. And it's in Christ's name we ask all these things. Amen. All right, Judd. Oh, all right. Let's sing our things. So. All right. Oh, me, Jesus, is my plea, sharing truth abundantly. For victory, only Jesus makes men free. He's the apple and omega, the beginning and the end. Keep your eyes on only Jesus, He's coming again. Only Jesus is my plea, calling out a bandit. sing and then you guys sounded great. I love hearing young people sing. You know, revivals will oftentimes get started by young people. And, uh, so we need to just really pray that God will do a work in their hearts just as much as ours. So, all right. Um, well, let's turn to 439, all right? I love this song. I know I've, I've sung it a lot, but I do love it. And, uh, and uh, it's really appropriate for today. Dwelling in Beulah Land, 
you know, you know, let's let's sing it. You can remain seated, but let's sing this as if it's happening right now because it is. This is not a song. You'll notice at the top of your book it says heaven. It's actually a present reality right now, and uh, you'll notice that it says that dwelling in Beulah That's present tense. All right. So uh, let's uh, let's sing that song together. All right, with faith in our hearts, knowing that.
All right, well, turn to Psalm 1. All right, that's, our, that's going to be, it's kind of, a, kind of a little step away from our series this morning. And, uh, I just was led, I was, I was uh, meditating on this particular psalm this morning, and just kind of really spoke to me about some things, and I just thought it might help. Yes, bless you, indeed. <laughs> All right, so... Psalm 1, some of you can probably quote it, but um, I'd like it if you could still turn and just kind of look at it with me. Um, there's a, there, you know, that way you'll have, you'll have, you'll be able to mark it, um, and uh, just, uh, just some things that, uh, that the Lord got my attention about, and I think it'll be a blessing, so, uh, but uh, the title of the message is Planted, and uh, that's what we need to be, so let's uh, let's read it, all right? Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff, which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Lord, I am asking that you just help us as we consider uh, some of these truths within your word. Uh, Lord, I pray that you would just uh, guide us and help us to uh, learn to draw closer to you. Lord, as we consider these very simple truths, uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of things in here that really detail the Spirit-filled life. And so, Lord, I pray that you would just help us to consider these things this morning. And it's in Christ's name we ask all these things. Amen. All right, so, um, you know, there's a, this is just one of those passages that when you look at it and you study it, if you've, if you've uh, read the Psalms for any length of time, you've probably know this one almost by heart. Some of you do know this by heart, um, but uh, the Word of God is alive, and there's two things that uh, we, we tend to look at one thing when we study this, but it's important that we look at two things. It's almost like the flip side of a coin. You know, you've got two sides to one coin, and really this is what you're looking at in the Psalms. And uh, I'm not going to be long with this. I just... Uh, uh, I, I wanted to just nourish your hearts and just kind of help you a little bit. Um, and I want you to understand, first of all, that this is you. Uh, this, is, this is who you are, and uh, this is what's available to you. And I want to apply this spiritually this morning. Um, uh, I, I'm going to uh, just kind of uh, do an expository sermon. The R. Scott's love expository messages. So, uh, but uh, anyway, so I'm going to just kind of preach through this expositorially. And uh, I think it'll be a blessing to you, okay? Uh, but a uh, blessed, happy, happy is the man, all right? And he, he's happy. You know, we want to be happy. We want to be able to enjoy life. Uh, we want to be able to uh, walk in, 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 and have no fears, no worries, no concerns. And life is full of concerns. Life is full of worries. But uh, the Bible says, Jesus said, These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. All right? So blessed, when you look at that word blessed, you're actually looking at the word happy. And uh, I love how that David began. I love how the Psalms begins this way because uh, he's basically, he gives the first word. Anybody who would read the Psalms who's discouraged, who's, who's unsure of what's going to happen tomorrow, or, or somebody who's distressed about things that have already happened or things that are going on in the present, uh, that person will open up the Psalms, and in verse 1, it says, Happy is the man. That's how it starts. And uh, so, notice that it says, Happy is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Now, I've heard different interpretations of this, but I'm going to apply this spiritually and uh, so that it will help you, it will kind of tie in a little bit to the Josiah revival that I'm going to be looking at tonight, all right? But, uh, but in this passage right here, verse 1, uh, first of all, we see the man who does not walk in, uh, in sin, transgression, all right? He denounces 
transgression. That's the first thing that I want you to notice, all right? Den the man denounces transgression or denounce transgression. You can write that down for yourself. This is how you can be happy. Denounce transgression. Get rid of it, all right? Just, uh, just say, Lord, I, you know, I, I'm getting rid of this, all right? I, I don't, have, I don't want to have anything to do with this. Um, and, and so uh, denounce transgression, all right? Now, this man who denounces transgression, he does it in three different ways. And uh, there's three different ways that we can see it. You know, uh, the Bible says, it says it in the second verse, it says that um, uh, in his law do they meditate day and night. Day and night, we do three different things. All right, we sit a lot of times. You're sitting right now. I'm standing. That's another thing that we do is we stand. And then another thing that we do is we walk. All right, so there's three different things that we do. All right, we, uh, at night, most of the time, we're lying down. All right, some of us sleep in a chair. I remember Miss Helen used to, I don't, I'm, I'm, I kind of wonder if Miss Helen could have excluded the lay down part. She never did lay down. She slept in a chair all the time. But nevertheless, uh, we, we do one of three things for the most part. We either lay down or we sit up or we walk, all right, or we, or we stand, okay? So there's actually, there, you're actually looking at four things there. But, but, uh, but specifically, when you're awake, you're either sitting, you're either walking, or you're standing, all right? Now, Notice that basically the battle goes on all day long. All day long we have to denounce evil. We have to denounce transgression. What, what, what do I mean by transgression? Sin is the transgression of the law. All right, that's, that's where it is. We're, we're basically having to denounce it. And the reason I use transgression is because we need to be mindful of what sin is. Sin is the transgression of the law. We need to consider what, what are the things that that might would hinder my walk with Jesus Christ. Why is my walk with Jesus Christ so very important? And I'm gonna show you some of those things today, but um, first of all, all right, notice that it says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. First of all, the man who denounces transgression doesn't pay attention to sinful people. All right, he doesn't pay attention to sinful people. All right, now, I realize that we need to pay attention. I, I understand that. You would understand what I'm trying to get at with this context. I'm talking about any type of guidance, any type of counsel, any type of, here's how you ought to live. There are people in our lives that we respect, that we love, and that we really want to see come to Christ a lot of times. There are people that we have respect for. Sometimes they come in the form of a celebrity. I know that there are celebrities in my life that I liked a lot. Uh, and they were not the influences that I ought to be following. Uh, I liked their life. I thought that they were conservative people. I thought that they had the same values. But they did not have a godly life. As a matter of fact, their life was godless. And however good their words were, however it might have sounded good, you would also hear things that weren't so good, especially when it came to music, all right? In my flesh, I enjoy rock and roll. And when you listen to that kind of stuff, it will counsel you in the wrong way. We have, uh, we, the, the Bible, or not the Bible, uh, it, it's been said, lang music is the language of the soul. And really, the world's got it figured out. The world knows how to speak to us. The world knows how to... Uh, uh, that's why the music industry makes so much money, because they are able to influence us with their words. They know how to get to our hearts. They know how to steal our hearts. They know how to get us to empathize with their story. And, uh, you know, a lot of times you'll hear in, in you know, in, in certain types of music, you'll hear about how that, uh, you know, this person had this particular boyfriend or girlfriend and they they uh, they, they go and they they uh, basically tear down their name and embarrass them and you know and, and just th that's basically what the song's all about I don't have anything to do with you I'm free to go my own way and all this stuff and basically they just you know uh, you know I, I think of one song that the, 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 the girl was singing about her boyfriend and she said uh, you're so vain you probably think this song is about you all right it, it's, it does not edify. It doesn't build up. It doesn't help us personally. As a matter of fact, when we hear songs like that, we think about people that are vain in our lives, and we begin to go, yeah, that's right. I, you know, what, what an idiot. And we begin to think of things that, 
that, that, that are not edifying to our own soul. We've got to constantly be on the watch for our own soul. While you are, uh, while you are dwelling over enemies or people who have done you wrong and done you hurt, it's almost when you dwell on them and you think about them and you, and you constantly stay on that topic of the people who have hurt you, what happens is, is it's almost like, it's almost like t drinking a cup of poison and hoping that that person is going to die because really you're just eating yourself alive. And uh, so we need to be careful about what we listen to. Don't listen to things that are going to remind you about your past. Don't listen to music that's going to tear you down. Even if it's feel-good music, make sure that you're careful about what you're listening to because you need to make sure that you're building your soul up because the world is constantly sitting, walking, standing. It's constantly trying its best to tear you down. Do you know why? Because it is, uh, it is uh, in league with the devil. All right? The devil wants to destroy mankind. God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. I understand that God doesn't need us. I've heard all the sermons about how God doesn't need us. I'm going to tell you this. God has designed us to where he has, he's basically decided. It's, it was his decision. He designed it this way. But at the present moment, he does need us. He has, he has designed it that way. Now, from the start, did he need us? No, he didn't need us. But he has designed it for the particular ministry that he's given to us. He needs us to be the image of God. And that's why the devil is out to destroy every human being who could possibly represent Jesus Christ. He hates Christians. The reason why when you think of uh, people who are, are, are mean and degrading and prideful, oftentimes we think about people that are in church. We think about people, you know, I, I was... Uh, I was taught, Mary Ann was telling me about somebody who said, all the church people that I know, they, they, don't, they don't do anything in the neighborhood. They just kind of stay in their house, and when somebody has a crisis, uh, they just, you know, they, they don't do anything. But then they're out here trying to tell us to go to church. But all the other guys that I uh, have over to drink and all this other stuff, they do things for us. You know, I understand that. The thing is, is that the devil is not targeting the lost world. The devil is targeting the church so that he can make the church look bad to the world. He wants us to obscure the image of Jesus Christ. And so in order to do that, he is going to bring people our way, friends, music, movies, anything that he can to counsel you in the way of ungodly men. All right. So that's that's necessary that we recognize that first. We denounce transgression by not paying attention to sinful people, but also we don't participate in sinful practices either. All right. We don't we don't indulge in sin, whether it's private sin or whether it's outward sin. You know, I, I've heard of several people say, you know, I, I know so-and-so who claims to be a Christian and they, you know, they're, they're buying alcohol like it's nothing. I, I'm going to be honest with you, when people do that like it's nothing, you kind of wonder if they're even born again, all right? But the thing is, is that there are some people who blatantly don't care and they flaunt their sin and say that it's okay, all right? It's a lax type of a Christianity. But then there's people who you think have it together and they have a private life of sin, it doesn't matter. Whatever you're filling your mind with, whatever you're filling the eye gate with, the ear gate with, whatever it is, whatever you're indulging in, it's obscuring the image of Jesus Christ. It's obscuring, it's obscuring the life of Christ from this world. Not only that, but it's taking away from the power of God in your personal life, which I'm going to get into a little bit more in just a minute. But when we, when we uh, participate in sinful practices, it makes our vessel dirty, and God doesn't want to have anything to do with sin. He wants to have everything to do with us, but He hates sin. And if sin is in our life, He can't use us. If we have a filthy vessel... The Bible says that we are uh, that there are vessels in a in, in a in a large house. There are vessels uh, that are unto honor, and some that are unto dishonor. And you know, God is looking for a vessel that's unto honor. He's looking for a clean vessel. He's looking for a vessel that's washed. And we ought not to just look and opinionate and say, "Okay, I think that looks pretty clean to me." No, we need to take that vessel and say, "How does it look to you?" If you were to fill me right now, is there anything that displeases you about this? That's the part where most of us say, okay, I think I'll stop there, all right? We need to say, okay, Lord, we need to take care of what Dr. Flanders often calls the elephant in the room, all right? I love that phrase because it's the obvious sin. It's the sin that makes us go, okay, yeah, that's, that, you know, I, de I definitely have got to take care of that problem. If there's somebody that you've wronged or something that you've done, something that you might have stolen, something that you might have lied about, 
you get that right if you know about it. And then once you, once you have covered everything that you know uh, has displeased the Lord, transgressions I'm talking about, then you say, Lord, search me. All right? You've done it before. That's what it says in uh, Psalm 139, I think. It, it, he says, Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. That's how it starts. And basically, he goes through this whole psalm and he talks about how that you know everything about me. You know my thoughts before I even thank them. You know, you, you know where I am in the dark. If I was to flee to, if I was to flee to the uttermost parts of the earth, you're already there waiting for me. That's basically what the psalm is all about. And then it ends with, so search me, O God. You're, nothing's hidden from you. And uh, you know more than I do. You know my thoughts before I even think them. So search me, O God, and know my heart again. Try me and know my thoughts. And would you see, you're the all-seeing eye. You're the holy eye. You're the, you know, you talk about somebody who's OCD. God is that way about sin. He does not like sin. And you know, the thing is, is that in order for us to please God, it's not in our own strength. We cannot possibly begin to even try to be as holy and pure as he expects us to be. He said, be ye holy, even as your Father which is in heaven is holy. That's impossible. And so we say, Lord, I need your help. I need you to search me and know my heart. And then, Lord, when you show me what they are, would you, by your power, by your strength, keep me prone to wander? Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart. Lord, you take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Help me, Lord, to win this victory over sin, okay? So not participating in, in a transgression. Don't, don't praise the scorners. That's the third thing, okay? Don't praise the scorners. Sit up in the seat of the scornful. All right, that basically means that you're supporting them, okay? Well, that, that's, that's kind of how I tend to look at it, all right? There's, there, that's a different way. That's another way. That a man who is happy, who all right, happy is the man that does not praise scorners. What do I mean by that? All right, what I mean by that is this: when you're hearing gossip, don't repeat it. Don't say, "Yeah, that's right." Yeah, give me all the dirt. I know some people who know all the dirt in this town. You need, if you want to know what the dirt is about so and so, you go to this particular person. I can name them. I can actually give you names of people that know everything that's going on in this town. Don't sit in their seat. Don't sit there and go, oh, are you serious? Wow, that's just terrible. All right? You are sitting in the seat of the scornful, and you're taking it in, and you're agreeing with it. Don't do that. All right? Don't do that. One of the things as Christians that we tend to do is we tend to listen to uh, people that agree with our flesh. All right? Our flesh says, I don't like what the preacher said. It was too spiritual. All right? Here's another thing that the flesh will say. Um, you know, I just don't, there, the music that's at that church, it just doesn't, it, it, it doesn't do anything for my feelings, all right? That's not what we do music here for. We do music to help us to worship the Lord. Should it be good music? Sure, it should be good music. But here's the thing, it ought to cause our hearts to be turned to Him, it shouldn't ever have I in it all the time, all right? Now, I'm not talking about here's my heart, Lord, take and seal it. I'm not talking about that. It, it, when it says here's my heart, it involves the Lord, all right? I've heard music where it says, I've walked down this life and I've had a difficult path, but Lord, you're always good to me, all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, throw it in the garbage. That doesn't edify my spirit. It might, be, it, it might make you feel good for a time, but you cannot expect that to last, that which is eternal, that which is unseen, that which is of God, that's what lasts. And hearing the truths of God's word, that lasts. That will keep you from going back to the well that you keep going back to to try and find, uh, to, to, to try and get your thirst quenched every time. But, uh, but we, we don't sit in the seat of the scornful. So basically there's three different things when it comes to denouncing transgression. We don't listen to sinful people. All right? We don't participate in sin and we don't agree with it. We don't sit there and, and, uh, and, and, and listen to it and, and let our hearts be filled with these things and go, yeah, yeah, I, I think I'm going to keep doing this because this person and that person agrees and this person. You know, I was actually confessing some, uh, a couple sins that, that, uh, that had crossed my mind uh, while I was praying with Wilson this morning. And, and uh, one of them was, uh, you know, I, I, I began to use a word in, in the midst of our family because I had heard a church that I admire and respect. I had heard a church, 
And I heard a man use that word on the pulpit, and I thought, well, that's not that bad. And so I was, and you know, the fact of the matter is, is it was bad. Even though it, it, even though the most respectful person that you know might use a particular word, it doesn't make it right. See what I'm saying? And so don't agree with what you know to be sin. By the way, the Holy Spirit will tell you. You know, you can't be, you can't, you can't be this person who's all knowing and, and know what, know every single sin that's out there. I understand that. But when the Holy Spirit says, I don't like that, listen to him. Listen to him. It, when, when that peace begins to go away, when you begin to go, ah, I just don't feel right about this, all right? I remember when Daphne Ellis got saved, bless her heart, she's with the Lord now. When Daphne Ellis got saved, I, I had the opportunity of leading her to the Lord. And I watched her grow, and she began to, she, she got some magazines, some storybooks, some kind of, I think it was, I, I'm not sure, it wasn't Harlequin or anything like that, but it was some romance little things that she would get in the mail. And uh, she said, uh, she said, I just couldn't, I couldn't read those anymore. I just started throwing them away. Every time they show up in the mailbox, I just started throwing them away. I think about Traven. Traven's not here, so I'm going to embarrass him. But he came in, he had earrings in both ears. And, uh, and, and, you know, we didn't say one word about his earrings. And uh, one day he came in and he doesn't have earrings anymore. And he, you know, if you see him come in now, he doesn't have earrings in his ears. All right, now, you know, Pastor Mike, what's wrong with men having earrings? Well, you know, I, the Lord spoke to him about it, all right? I'm not going to preach an old message on why it's wrong for men to have earrings. I understand, okay? But what I'm trying to get at is this, that the Lord spoke to him. It made him uncomfortable. He said, you know, I just don't feel right about this. And he stopped, all right? So we need to listen to him, all right? So the, first of all, the man denounces transgression, the, the happy man. He denounces transgression. He, he gets away from sinful people, friends, music, anything that would cause him to think about those things. He doesn't participate in it, and he doesn't agree with it. But then he also delights in truth, all right? He delights in truth. So that's number two, all right? So denounce transgression, all right? He denounces transgression, but then he delights in truth, all right? How does he delight in truth? All right, that's, that's the important thing. All right, he does the opposite of his decision with sin. All right, he does the opposite of it. All right, he pays attention to Scripture. You remember what I said about don't listen? Don't listen to, don't pay attention to sinful people. All right, he, he pays attention to Scripture. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Try it out. Read the Bible. Take out your Bible. Study the Bible. Take out a psalm. Read a psalm. Read it out loud. See what it does for your soul. Some of you, I wonder if you have, if you read your Bibles every day, all right? Now, I, I realize there are some of you who do, but if, if you, if, if, it's, it's not something that you have to do. It's something you get to do. You have to understand that. It's something that's available to you. The Word of God is everywhere, and it's the best thing that you can ever feed to your soul yeah. is the Word of God. It, it will help you immensely in your life. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Sometimes his word doesn't seem to make sense with life. Sometimes it almost seems as if uh, what he's trying to say, it just doesn't fit to the way we feel. But we trust him anyway because Amen. he's good all the time. And we have to trust me to say, Lord, you know, I'm not sure why I'm not seeing this. You promised this. Now, Lord, would you show me? Would you help me to understand why I'm not seeing what you promised right here? It may be that you want me to use the keys to unlock the door to see this promise happen because I'm not seeing it here on earth. So, Lord, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Or, you know, it could be that the Lord's withholding something because of sin in your life. Check and make sure. Talk to him. He wants to talk to you. He wants to get to know you. There ought to be no relationship in the world, in this entire world, a husband, wife, anybody that should ever supersede the relationship that you have with God. Yeah. And the thing is, we, we've so, we so seldom, uh, it, it, if it's not monologue where we're talking to him all the time, it's not talking to him at all. It ought to be dialogue, just like a good, healthy relationship. It ought to be where we listen yeah. to him and we let him yeah. talk to us. Have you ever thought, you know, I, one of the things that I love to do, and I try to do this um, uh, sometimes, is I'll read a psalm and I'll pray through it. George Mueller did that. George Mueller prayed through uh, so he, he would say, he would read it in his, uh, he would actually write it down in his uh, journals. You have to read his journals. His journals are amazing. But he would say, uh, as I was praying one morning, I was praying through Psalm 32. And he would talk about how that, you know, he would read something and he would say, Lord, make that real in my life or help me to do this better. Or, Lord, I'm not seeing this. Now, I never noticed this promise before and I'm not really seeing it in my life. Would you make this real in my life? You ought to pray through the Psalms. It's really edifying. But that's something that he did. 
And uh, boy, he saw so many answers to prayer. And by the way, George Mueller was a mighty man of God. But I'm going to tell you, if you read his journal, you'll understand he was very much a man too. <laughs> I love reading his journals because he goes like this. This is the, the, the first one says, we received, a, we, we received eight sovereigns from Sister So-and-So. It's going to be able to help us get going with our uh, orphanage. And then uh, that's September the 7th, right? September the 8th. The Lord really tried our spirits today. We have absolutely nothing in the bank. And then it says, evening. The Lord gave us three pounds. All right? And then the next day it says, the Lord really tried our spirits today. And then the next, the next one it says, September the 11th. The Lord blessed. He came through. God supplied our needs. Gave us the materials to make clothes for our orphans and all this stuff. And then the very next day... Oh, the Lord really tried us again. <laughs> I love it. You know, but the thing is, is he never said, I don't know why the Lord's allowing all this stuff to happen in my life. No, he would always say this. He said, he said, the Lord be praised no matter what happens. I'm going to trust him no matter what. I'm going to trust him even if he doesn't, even if he decides yes. not to do it. And uh, he would search his heart. He, would, he, he, he asked the Lord. He said, Lord, do you want me to start this orphanage? Am I doing this orphanage so that I can uh, get glory from people? Am I starting this orphanage so that I can get praise from men? Or am I doing this because you want me to? And he actually would test himself out. He would, he would go to others. He'd say, hey, look, I want you to kind of interrogate me. Ask me about this orphanage. You know, ask me questions so that I can make sure that I'm right. And, and he would have friends. Uh, uh, his, one of his dear friends, Brother Crate. Would, uh, would, would talk to him and, 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 uh, and, and say, now, are you starting this orphanage for this or that? And he'd say, no, as far as I know, no, I don't think so. And then, uh, you know, when he was sure that it was something God wanted, uh, when, when the money wasn't coming in, guess what he did? He would say, Lord, are you sure you want me to do this? <laughs> George Mueller, the mighty prayer warrior of God, the guy who prayed that the fog would disappear and it dissipated just like that. He had his doubts. Doubt is not unbelief, folks. All right. Doubt is when you're putting God to the test. You're saying, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure about this. I, I do trust you, but Lord, I, I, I'm not seeing it happen. Now, Lord, would you, would you help me? Would you give me wisdom? All right. That's, that's what doubt is. All right. Faith is not the absence of doubt. All right. So, uh, you know, he, he, he does the opposite of what he, of what he did with say He pays attention to scripture. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Psalm 42, 1 is the heart panteth after the water brook, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. And uh, uh, Psalm 119, 97, I love this verse. Oh, how love I thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Well, it sounds like a super religious zealot. All right. No, no. He actually likes to meditate on the scripture. He actually enjoys it. You say, well, pastor, I just don't like meditating on the scripture. Then start getting into the habit. Start reading the Bible. Don't, don't, don't read the Bible for hours and hours. Don't try to make it a goal to read the Bible throughout the day. But start with little morsels. Read Psalm 1. Meditate on it. Pray over it. See what it does to you. It's impacting. Uh, you know, what I loved this morning was when I got on band and I put a little quote by George Mueller on band, all of a sudden some of our people started sending me verses. And so you know what I did? I wrote it down and I put it on my wall because those were good verses. I was meditating on them. Why? Because I love the Bible, you see. All right, so uh, then, um, uh, oh yeah, Joshua 1, 8, this book of the law, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. All right. So, uh, so he, he then he participates or practices the scripture. Okay, that's the next thing. All right. He participates uh, and or, or practices the scripture. Um, so that's that's uh, a that, that, all right. So you remember what I said. All right. He does not participate in sin. But he does participate and practice the scriptures, okay? You can read about prayer all day long, but it's not going to answer any prayers. <laughs> you can read Prayer Asking and Receiving by John Rice, but it's not going to do anything to answer your prayers. You can read about George Mueller all day long, but it's not going to answer any prayers. You've got to get down and do it yourself. Now, those kinds of books will inspire you. Books that teach you how to pray will inspire you. But when you read those books and they inspire you, then put it to practice. Do it. You've gotten rid of the sin that you were doing. Now fill it with what's right. Okay, so that's all right. So you know you, you can read the Bible all day, uh, uh, all day, but 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 you you know you won't get fed if you just read it. You see what I'm saying? Uh, you got to meditate on. You can learn how to win, how to soul win, but that won't save souls. 
okay? You gotta actually do it. You gotta actually go out and tell people about Jesus Christ. And we need to do it in the power of the Lord. I'm not, look, I'm not for just going out and passing out gospel tracts with heavy spirits, all right? You know, I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be a Saul. You know what Saul did? Saul starved his soldiers. And then when they went out to battle, they were starving when they went out to battle. And they won the battle. But you know what they did? They flew on the spoil and they were eating meat raw. They, it, was, it, was, it, it caused one abomination after another because of what Saul had done. You know, I, I'm not telling you to go out and pass out tracts and, you're not, a, and you're, not, you're not an eater. All right? If you don't feast on God's word, please don't go soul winning. You'll be a terrible example in this town. But if you feast on God's word and you pray and you seek and you get his power, by all means, tell people about the gospel. In the power of the Lord, do it. It's important. Thankfully, we have Jesus to walk the righteous walk for us. 1 John 1, 7. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. That's me and Jesus. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all Sin, uh, you know, you, you think about that. If we walk, it, but, all right, it, it says, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, I want to help you understand, you can't just participate and practice what the word of God says without the Holy Spirit helping you, all right? When you received the Holy Spirit of God, you received everything that you needed. The life of Jesus Christ moved into you. It says that in 1 John chapter 1, it says that eternal life which now abides in us, all right? It's important that we understand that it's the life of Jesus Christ. Uh, if you go to, uh, if you ever go to Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20, you should underline just, just a couple words in there. Not I, but Christ. That's what you should underline. Just that little section right there in Galatians, or Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. All right? The whole thing says, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. But you ought to underline just, not I, but Christ, all right? Because that's really what it is. It's his life. It's only Jesus. It ought not to be only Jesus flowing in and through us, but our goal ought to be Jesus. Right. Our, Jesus ought to be everything that, that, that inspires us and promotes us to do something for him, all right? Um, uh, there's a verse that we often revert to when it comes to reaching a sinner, but seldom do we consider it to be for the saints as well, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. All right. It says, uh, it says, for by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. All right. Don't go out and soul win in your own strength. It's by grace that you're able to do it. For by grace ye soul win, by faith, and that not of yourselves. For by grace you pray, and that not of yourselves. For by grace you read the Bible, and that not of yourselves. For by grace you enjoy church. For by grace you worship the Lord. For by grace you're able to do all of these things. Not of yourselves. It's the gift. It's the grace of God. Not of works. Lest any man should boast. Oh, what how much of the Bible I read. I won 30 people to Jesus Christ the other day. Yeah. See, that's not what it's talking about. It's saying that we ought to do it by grace, by the direction, by the leading of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. In the very same way that someone got saved, Colossians 2, 6, as ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord. How did you get saved? By faith. All right? So walk ye in him. Walk ye in him. All right? Uh, then uh, uh, we should consider the sinner's prayer and fashion it to fit the saint's prayer. All right? You know, Lord Jesus, uh, I, I'm, I'm doomed for hell. There's nothing that I can do. I'm putting my complete and total dependence on you to save me. How about this? I'm putting my complete and total dependence on you so that I can go and win souls to Jesus Christ. I'm putting my complete and total dependence on you so that I can live a holy life for you. All right, all of those things. All right, so uh, then, uh, uh, so that those are, that, that's, that's what we, you know, not I, but Christ. Not of works, but of faith. I can't, you can. Um, 1 Corinthians 15, 20, I labored more abundantly than they all. That sounds like bragging, doesn't it? All right, but it doesn't stop there. It says, yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. All right, that's why he labored more abundantly than they all. Because it was the grace of God which was with him. Romans 5, 2. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Um, he, then he praises the scriptures. All right, he praises the scriptures. You remember where I said don't agree with the sinner? All right, instead, praise the scriptures. Agree with the scriptures, all right? Go ye therefore and teach all nations, all right? Tell people about what the scriptures say. 
Tell people, uh, tell people, Lord, uh, the Lord Jesus died for you. Don't be ashamed of it. You know, we can talk all about the, the ball games. We can talk all about, uh, you know, the, the news and what Biden said or what, you know, uh, you know, whoever else said, you know, Robinson and all these other people. We can talk all about that, but we can hardly open our mouth for the things that are spiritual. And the reason why is because we're spiritually desperate for food. We have caused our own famine. Think about that. Our flesh is besieging us. And it's not allowing any food to come in because we're so full of ourselves. You can't, you can't be, you, you know, people say, well, I can't, I, I, you know, I just don't understand how to be filled with the Spirit. Being filled with the Spirit is easy. The hard part is emptying yourself so that you can be filled with Him. Yes. You see, you have to be able to, you have to empty yourself. You have to say, I can't do this, Lord. And, you know, if you are desperate, you say, Lord, help me to understand how to be filled with the Spirit. He'll help you. Yeah. It'll take some time, but he'll help you, all right? Some people get it just like that, and there's others who it takes a little bit of time, but he will help you, all right? Uh, and, and by the way, I'm, I'm not here to tell you that some of you have never been filled with the Spirit. I'm saying that, uh, you know, there are certain places, certain points in your life when you depended on him completely, when you threw yourself on God completely because there was nothing that you could do, and he came through for you, that was yes. a moment when you were filled with the Spirit, yes. you see? It's, it's not one of these, you know, oh, I, I need to be anointed. It's not some zap or some feeling, all right? Don't, don't look for that. You'll, you'll, you'll wear, that'll wear away fast, all right? Spirituality lasts forever, all right? Yes. When you understand the truth, you can find joy and peace and patience and all these things, and they don't have to go away. It's only your choice for them to go away, all right? All right, so, uh, you know, go, go ye therefore and teach all nations. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and all Judea and in Samaria and under the uttermost parts of the earth, all right? So we need to receive his power. Um, and, uh, you know, this, this is what, uh, all right, now, I'm going to make this, I, I know I've got to close, all right, I've got to stop here. But I, 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 want, I want you to notice what happens when he practices both of these things, all right? So the first thing is... All right, remember what I said, all right, those of you who might not have written it down. The first thing is he denounces transgression and he delights in truth. And here's what happens when you do those things, okay? Um, first of all, he shall be firm. All right, this is what it means to be planted, all right? He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, yes. all right? He's firm. He shall be firm. By the way, he has to be. You know, I don't know if you've ever known some Christians, no matter what things happen in a church, no matter how much the church is shaken, no matter how much the church is, is ripped apart, certain people are still there, almost like an oak tree. You're like, how in the world are they able to deal with this kind of stuff? I I've seen people who have served God, no matter how difficult their lives are, no matter how much turmoil they've been in, and they keep walking into church with a big smile on their face, yes. like an oak tree. You ever heard of people that are stubborn as an oak? All right? A good Christian who's planted by the rivers of water, he's an oak. He's firm. All right? And he has to be because God never changes. James 1.17 says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from, is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights in whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. He never changes. When you have an unchanging God filling you, you're going to be firm. All right? You're going to be firm. Uh, Malachi 3, 6, for I am the Lord, I change not. And because of that, we're going to be like a tree planted by the rivers of water when we delight in him, all right? Then he shall be fruitful, all right? He has to be. Didn't Jesus say, I am the vine? All right? When we recognize him, when we delight in the vine, we will bear fruit. We can be fruitful. What is the fruit? The fruit of the Spirit is love. Joy, you can love your enemies. You actually can love your enemies for real. You don't have to pretend. You can actually do it. You can say, oh, Lord, here comes so-and-so, and I can't love this person. As a matter of fact, I don't. Lord, I'm confessing to you even right now that I hate him, and it's wrong. Would you cleanse me? And, Lord, I'm asking that your righteousness, your holiness, your love would fill me so that I can love that jerk over there. And all of a sudden, guess what? I know, my, I know Mary, you're laughing. All right, I got you. All right, get over it. All right. It's in the, am I not telling the truth here? All right. Am I, am I not telling the truth or, or am, I just, am I just a heathen and the rest of you are a bunch of angels? 
Okay. <laughs> I thought so. All right. So the thing is, is when you say, help me to love that person, guess what? The Lord will help you. Yes. See what I mean? I, I love you guys. Anyway, oh, so yeah, he'll be fruitful, all right? Love, joy. I don't feel very happy, Lord, but Lord, I'm trusting that I've got the Lord Jesus Christ who's full of joy in me. And Amen. guess what? You'll start feeling joy. Amen. You say, Lord, I, 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 I'm, I'm not feeling very patient right now. As a matter of fact, I'm losing my patience. If you have kids, you've lost your patience a million times. <laughs> all right, you can say, Lord, I need your patience right now. And guess what? You'll find yourself having patience. You'll, you'll, you'll even have patience to beat the tar out of them. <laughs> <All right? laughs> but patience, actually doing it the right way is what I'm trying to get at. Okay. All right, so then, uh, he, he, so fruit, I am the vine. All right, he shall be flourishing. That's the next one. All right, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Amen. He's flourishing. He has to be. He has to be. Why? Jesus never fails. <laughs> Amen. He never fails at anything. Whatever God, whatever, you think about what that means. Whatever Jesus puts his hand to, it produces fruit. Yes. He's got the Midas touch. You ever heard of King Midas? He, he, he got a wish granted that anything that he would touch turned to gold. And it got to a place where he would touch his food and it would turn to gold. They couldn't eat, you know. What a nightmare, all right? But God has the spiritual Midas touch. No matter what he does, it's good. He created the entire world in six days. And every single day, he said, it's good, it's good, it's good, it's good, it's good, it's good. It's good. Because he's got the Midas touch. He's got the ability to do everything right. And guess what? We can be too because we're full of them. That's good stuff, isn't it? It's good. Yes. All right. 1 Corinthians 15, 57. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Are you having, a, are you, are you having trouble getting over uh, a, an addiction? Are you having trouble getting over a habit? Are you having trouble getting over a certain sin that you keep committing? Are you having trouble uh, getting over fear or anxiety or worry or the past or the future or the present? Do you have problems with that? Then you claim the Lord Jesus Christ and you say, I am not going to be victorious over this, but you will be and you live in me and he'll help you. That's what it's about, okay? 2 Corinthians uh, 2.14, Now thanks be unto God, which always... Did you hear that word? You've got to write that verse down. 2 Corinthians 2.14, Now thanks be to, unto God, which always causeth us to triumph in Christ and make it manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. Boy, that sounds kind of like a big promise. That's a, you know, that, that, that's, a, that's a big thing for God to carry out. Well, he's God. He's able to do it. No problem. <laughs> 2 Corinthians 2.14. Always causes us to triumph in Christ and make it manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in Tarboro even. <laughs> what do you know about that? All right, so, you know, I, I, I want to just, uh, I want to get to a, I want to get to a stopping place here. And I do have to stop. I am gonna. I, I'm gonna say this first before I show you this quick video. Before I close, uh, the ungodly are considered as chaff. You ought to look up that word. And I'm not talking about lost people. I'm talking about Christians. When you look up chaff, look up every time the word chaff is mentioned in the Bible. Guess what's happening to it? It's being chased by the wind, or it's being blown or controlled by the wind. No matter what this world does, you're going to be controlled by it. You're going to be influenced by it. Whenever the winds of change begin to blow, you start running. You start fleeing. You worry. You despair. Oh, what's going to happen to America next? Chaff. It blows. It's like tumbleweed. Sometimes it lands in good places. Sometimes it doesn't. And the thing is, is the wicked are like the chaff, which the wind drives away. You know what the Bible says? It says that the wicked flee when no man pursueth. You know, when you're doing stuff wrong, you have a tendency to do this. Is anybody looking? You know, you're fleeing. When no one's really even... I didn't know he was doing that, but boy, you know, he ended up confessing that he did it because he felt like everybody was looking at him. Guilt. The chaff. It's, it's not worth it. It's not worth living that way. Live by delighting in God. It's so good, so much better. And uh, I, I just want to just, uh, I want you to hear, you know, Elizabeth Elliot, I named, my, I named Bryson after Jim Elliot. Jim Elliot was one of the missionaries in Ecuador, and he was killed by the Alca Indians. Just suddenly, 
He just began his ministry. They just made contact with the Alcas, and suddenly they what, the, there was a few lies that were told, and they got hostile, and they ended up spearing five of those missionaries, including Jim Elliott, a godly man. Mm -hmm. And his wife said, I don't know what I'm going to do next. I have no idea, but she learned through all of that trial, all that difficulty. She said, you know, I'm just going to trust God with every step. Yeah. Everything that I do, the next thing that I do, I'm going to trust God. I'm going to trust God. And so she, she, would, she would follow him. And I love what she says about the verse that says, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. I want you to listen to what it says, because you're going to discover that you're no different than I am, and I'm no different than you are. What's different is what we're filling ourselves with, okay? So go ahead, Harrison. We have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may be revealed in our body. Yes, I thought, I'm a clay pot. Like the pots these Alka women make. Nobody's interested in the pot. They're all alike, all made from the same clay. What interested them was the contents. I'm here to be a vessel, to share somehow this priceless treasure, the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Um, of, um, Charles Finney called the gospel of the saint, the, the, the gospel that I've been preaching this whole time. He called it the real gospel, all right? What he's trying to say is, is that, folks, there's people that are looking for something real. They're not interested in our pot. You know, when you compare what we do next to God, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how, how fast you can run. It doesn't matter how good you can walk. It doesn't matter how, how smart you are or how... Uh, it, it doesn't matter because the thing is, is in comparison to God, we're all just a bunch of clay pots. People aren't interested in that. They want to know, hey, what you got inside? That's what faith, faith is the substance of things hoped for. When you look at that word substance, think about it at the beginning part, sub, that's underneath, what lies underneath. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hey, what's in your pot? Oh, I can, that's in my pot, huh? And they're looking for something that's not of this world. Yes. You see, the thing is, is all of us were made to be filled with one thing, and that's God. We all have a God-shaped hole inside of each of us. Even the lost have a God-shaped hole, and they're looking for something that's going to fill it. And the only thing that's going to fill it is God. Amen. So let's show them.